Look at this. It is 2013. You start a YouTube channel. Yes, you might have a knack for news and then you say, let me go outside there, start this YouTube channel, because I've got an idea of how news should be consumed and conversations about news or what is missing in the traditional mass media. You say, let me start that YouTube channel. Now, nine years later, you realize that you have more than 500 million views, and then all of a sudden, you have a huge following. In fact, more than even some of those traditional media houses that you're sort of saying, you might not be doing it the right way. There's something that is missing. So 1.35 plus, and that is counting, which essentially then becomes the Africa Das for a News channel. That's a big fit. But then what is a bit interesting, even to think about it, is who decides to say, let me sell news online? We don't have the founder of that particular channel, and I know in one way or another, you've interacted with it. So all those questions that you've been asking, we're gonna put them to him, but we don't have Phil Scott in the house today. Phil Scott, how are you doing, sir? Doing good, thank you for having me. Happy to have you around. Let's, let's begin like this. It is back in 2013. Mm -hmm. You decide, let me start a YouTube channel mm -hmm. on news. What was, mm -hmm. the, what was the motivation behind that? Uh, watching what a lot of you know, my you know, people go through in America, uh, dealing with police brutality, racism, discrimination, white supremacy, and having the voice that we need because traditional mainstream media, which is not black owned, um, don't speak to our issues and problems, or I notice they will try to criminalize us. If, they, if the police kill us, it's somewhere our fault, even though we had no weapon, we didn't do anything wrong, but yet it's always our fault, you know, calling us names like thugs. A person that could have been a straight A student's college degree, but still calling us a thug, and we see, realize, say, hmm, that's another way, way of calling us the N-word. We figured that out. So we had to go to war against you know, white-owned corporations who are very anti-black. Yes. And you cannot do it unless you do it on our own platforms. They will not allow us to defend us on their platforms. So that's where a lot of the motivation came from. Pretty much. So it's back in 2013, mm -hmm. and I'm thinking, well, you're seeing this as a platform just to air out your frustrations or what you're seeing missing in the mainstream media. Mm -hmm. Did you think at one point that you're going to grow to this level where now people have to look up to you on, on issues, culture, and, and, and politics? No, didn't think about that at all. No, <laughs> I was just trying to yeah. uh, make a transition from the petrochemical industry uh, to having you know, my own you know, platform and having a voice to speak for, you know, the grassroots, because the grassroots is, is where the real people are at, not yes. the people that's in the upper echelons, just the everyday, you know, people who's out there in the trenches, and that's who we, you know, partner with and speak, you know, for. Yes. At what point, Phil Scott, did you realize, hold on, I might be up to something here, so I have to transition fully and focus on this? I guess when people started to seek me to say, hey, could you, what do you think about this? Mm -hmm. like, have you talked about this yet? And uh, what do you think? And I say, well, at first I'm like, well, in the mainstream talk about this? And we don't care about what they say, we come out what you say. So as they start doing this more and more, we start looking at the viewership. Obviously the viewership shows that they're concerned about, you know, our opinions and giving, you know, our facts. And people always say, you showed us stories that nobody else show us. Even people in the African continent say, I didn't even know that was going on, you know, and I watch news all the time. So that's kind of like what we always just been our model is focus on the stories that nobody else is focusing on. Yes. That's concerning for black people. Yes. As a black American, I would like to think, isn't it? that you're trying to, step, to tell the story of the black American, that's how I started, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Of this black person in America who essentially doesn't get their views out. Does that show the needs or what is essentially missing then in mainstream media generally to the sense that you had to take it up by yourself and then realize they don't do it like we do it. Mm -hmm. Yes, is, is that what is lacking in mainstream media? Well, that's been lacking for ever, right? Did you say that? It's, it's, it's been, oh, oh, yes, yes, it's been lacking forever because if you think about it, who owns the majority of the media? Some sort of European entity. Um, and we know that Europeans and the way they move, mm -hmm. they move in the, in the system of white supremacy. And white supremacy 
is not going to show what happens to me and what happens to you. Um, we can complain about what they don't show. Why well, don't have enough representation? Because that's a lot of conversations. Well, why don't CNN or BBC have enough black representation? That's theirs. Why are we begging them for their stuff? We need to create our own, and then we put our own people up to talk about our message. Yes. You understand? Mm -hmm. um, so with, for me, BBC and the rest of them are the European diaspora channels. We talking about the African diaspora, which is black people all over the world no, exactly. and our stories. It's not their responsibility to be covering what we should be covering. Yes. Um, I like somebody said, and this is a direct uh, comment that, that I got from um, one of the guys who said, well, Phil Scott is coming. I like the approach that he's taken. Can you ask him? Is he decided to say, let the people tell whatever story it is that they want to tell? Is that the angle that your channel is taking? Yes, yeah, so whatever's concerning for black people, Africans, Caribbeans, Afro-Latinos, whatever's concerning, that's what we want to talk about. Uh, we're not talking about what everybody else is saying. For instance, like right now in Kenya, one of the hot stories now is GMO foods. Mm -hmm. yes. That's what we will focus on. And now since I've been here, I'm going to stick to that story for a little while because it, it, I know personally from coming from America that GMO foods is not something you want in your country. Yes. Um, Africans have been growing their food for thousands of years, feeding their families for thousands of years without the help of no type of European scientists altering the food, right? So I'm very against that due to the health aspect of what happens in America. Black people suffer the most with the health, cancer, diabetes, heart disease, etc. A lot of it is linked to the food. So anybody that's against GMO, I'm with you 100% just for the health of the people. Yes. It's, it's not the very first time that you're in Kenya personally, Phil no. Scott. Mm -mm. You were here back in 2019. Yes, sir. Could you, could, you, could, you, could you tell me why you were here in 2019 and essentially then what brings you back in 2022? Well, in 2019, we had partnered with a, uh, a company called Worldviews, and they, we partnered with them uh, to bring 30 uh, black Americans that had never been to the African continent at all. Um, you know, we are miseducated heavily about the African continent. You know, we are shown, you know, things like National Geographic, where they show people in the village struggling growing up, or we had Sally Struthers feed the children. Oh, look at the poor kids in Ethiopia. And believe it or not, my first country was Ethiopia. Yes. And when I got there, I was like, I can't believe they lied to me like this. And I, I got very angry the first so time you, I went. You actually got educated yourself. Yes. By when going you got to Ethiopia. When I get to Ethiopia, yeah. Yeah. The media, the they media lied. pictures that you... They you, lied. They lied. They lied. They lied. <laughs> and, and when someone's deceiving you uh -huh. and you find out the truth, you yes. get angry. And I say, all these years, you know, I, I was believing this and I missed out on all of this. And, and you know, telling me welcome home and, and just having a spiritual connection to the land, you know, the whole continent itself. That's when I really say, you know what? We got to do something different here. And that's when I came back to America and, and started really focusing on, you know, the whole diaspora at that point, yes. you know, a little bit more. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So now you have this 30 individuals who've never been to the African continent. When you look at them, I know you're walking around with them and you're introducing them to these areas that they've never been or they've mm -hmm. never known actually do exist in Africa. Do you look at them and see yourself back when you went to Ethiopia? Sure. Sure. And like I said, this is the second group, like I said, that's here to, you know, this year. Yes. So total through our platform, we brought 60 people yes. to the African continent. Mm -hmm. Great, because no other black platform, at least doing news, is doing it like that. And, and, and we're happy to do that. It's not to say that we're better than anybody. No, we're just glad to bring people to see, you know, what I got to see because it, it'll spark a, a interest in them, mm -hmm. you know, to do things here. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and at the end of the day, you, 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 you want to achieve what then by bringing them right here to the African continent? Is it to tell the African story the way it's supposed to be told? Well, for me, it's, I don't have to do nothing more than get you here. The, the, the spiritual connection and what they had missed yes. when our ancestors was taken away about 500 years ago would do its, its own work. I just need to be the, the vehicle, a part of the vehicle, to get you here. Yes. The, the, the land and the, and, and the spirit of the land does its own work. I don't need to do no more than that. Pretty much. Mm -hmm. Now, let's get to the gist of the conversation then. Mm -hmm. It's not when you're saying that um, you're now essentially in Kenya. Mm -hmm. And every time you, you tell somebody, well, I'm right there within your country, somebody's going to ask you, how do you want to tell our story? Make it perfect. Because indeed, if you're going to go to Africa, then well, these particular countries are going to start looking for their representation. Mm -hmm. Are you telling our story? How are you going to tell the Kenyan story now that you're in Kenya for the very second time saying, 
I want to tell the African story or the Kenyan story. Well, you got to bring people in that's from the country. Yes. First and foremost. Mm -hmm. But bring them in underneath, you know, our particular system. The system we have doesn't change our formula works. It's just bringing them in and really covering the stories that the people care about. Because from what I've seen with our people all over the world, they don't really care about who's telling it. They're just making sure you tell the story, tell it right. That's the two things they care about. Don't disrespect nobody. That's the three things they care about. They don't care if it's somebody from way across the world. They have told me, I have people in, tell me, Phil, could you cover this? I'm not of those particular countries, but look, how I look at it, I, it's no separation with black people with me. I don't get on all that, well, you're not my people, you're not my tribe. I don't, I don't get into that. Because when it comes to racism, white supremacy, they don't see me as a one this, and they see you as black. And that's how I think living in America, dealing with racism, white supremacy for you know, 500 years. So that's my mindset coming in. Yes. Direct question as well from um, one of our viewers who said, mm -hmm. are we going to see the new work directly then? with a Kenyan storytellers then to improve the content that we're going to see on uh, your channel? Well, so right now, you know, we have um, a Kenyan editor right yes. now that edits mm -hmm. for us. Yes. Um, and we have Sister Wong Gale that's here. You know, she lives here uh, with her family. Um, we will be looking to add more people because we want to build a base here, and we'll be looking to Kenyans to do that. Yes. Um, but anyone can tell the story of black people. If, if a Kenyan could talk about something in America, a Kenyan could talk about something in, in uh, Latin America, we don't hold people back um, of what they can say or what they can't say because we, I don't believe in stifling creativity of anybody. Uh, regional things, great, and we want to listen to the people. You tell me what it is, we'll try to get it covered. Mm -hmm. But... I'm not a Kenyan, but I will tell something that's going on in Kenya because that's important. We all, you know, um, should tell the story of each other. Then that's really what the, my mission is. There's no separation here. At this time, Phil, when we're talking about the growth of digital content as the content that drives conversations, mm -hmm. you find yourself in a space where, whether you like it or not, Phil Scott, now, somebody's going to compare you with BBC, compare you with CNN and Al Jazeera on, on that platform, because when you look at the following that you have digitally, it is one-on-one -on -one with whatever the other media companies that have been established in the group. I would like to call them old media. Mm -hmm. Is that something that makes you think? of maybe doing it their way, if indeed somebody's gonna look at you and say, well, I gotta look at this particular news that you're doing and then compare with what the rest of them are doing. I don't care what people compare me to. I mean, I compare myself to myself. Yes. And uh, what they're doing is old and dead anyway. Uh, we are, the, what we say today, the new black media. And we focus on that, and that formula is working. Um, the digital space has gotten rid of the gatekeepers who would keep great people out, like myself and many others. Um, we don't have to deal with that anymore. We can just go straight to the people. Yes. And that's the beauty of, of the digital age. And so what I do is no, BBC don't compare to me. CNN don't compare to me because they're gatekeepers. They're pushing racism, white supremacy. We don't push that. We push the empowerment of black people, the empowerment of Africans, Caribbeans, Afro-Latinos. That's what we push. We push empowerment mm -hmm. of our people. They don't push that. Yes. This is a bad question as well. They say that we like what you're doing with... Um the Africa Diaspora News Channel, mm -hmm. but then you're running on a platform which is essentially now getting opened up to heavy regulation on topics that you actually get to touch on. So it becomes very easy for maybe one or two stories that you may want really to get out there the right way, maybe to get killed or maybe to get so much complaints on it. And then you find at the end of the day, that story doesn't get to see the light of the day. Interesting question, Phil, and you gotta be very careful on how to respond to this. I think as you grow, are we going to see your channel then go back to what these other old media stations have been doing, the, the old media, where indeed now you have the right and you have the permission, which is essentially sole permission from you, to run whatever story it is that you want without fearing any type of regulation because you're running essentially on somebody's platform who's a heavy on regulation as well. Well, you won't see no change. And also, we have AfricanDiasporaNews.org, which is our website. So we yes. can post whatever we want on our own website. Yes. That was the purpose of having our own website, not just having YouTube. Because, yes, every country has laws, rules, regulations. Fine. And we will follow those. But you can talk about a hundred different things and have a different way of doing it where they won't even pick up on what you're saying, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. So we're not changing anything because we change anything. We might as well just shut, shut the lights down. Pretty much. 
So somebody asked again, does the consumption of news, mm -hmm. you know, heavily on the African market, which might be a bit different because essentially when we're talking about the European market. I mean, digital content is the way to go now. Mm -hmm. But when you're coming out to Africa, are you going to adopt the same strategy that has worked for you in the European market? Or you're thinking about changing your approach then to make it the African way so that the African market can also get to consume your news? Well, the African market is consuming it now. And I have, like I say, one host, like I said, right now, you know, one girl's LLM, she's here in Kenya. Yes. And a lot of, you know, African people watch our content daily from all over. Um, so our formula works. I'm not changing a thing. Um, the way Europeans do things don't work for black people. Mm -hmm. So our model is going to come here and it's going to, it's doing very well now. It's generating things now. Uh, different videos that went viral on our channel, African stories, you know, I've, I've viewed viral one plus million, you know, views. We've had several stories from the African, you know, market that's done that based on our approach. And our approach is simple. We find what, what happens with black people. If it's any kind of racism or bigotry, we're definitely going to call that out. We're very aggressive about that, yes. um, especially when people come into the African continent and being very racist. You know, we have no tolerance to that. And we're very aggressive to the point where if you don't like Africans, carry your happy self back to your country where you come from. Because you're not going to do what you do here. But then if you go to your country, you will let an African know real quick they can't do whatever they want to do in your country. So I have to say have the same respect. So we take that approach in everything that we do. You're going to respect Africans in their homeland. Um, Africans need to control their own resources, their own destiny without the help of any other you know, powers out here lying about the African continent. So that's what we focus on, at least here. And all the young people are in agreement with what I'm doing. Yes. So we don't have to change a thing. As you grow bigger, mm -hmm. and that we've seen not happen even for companies and products in the market, mm -hmm. that as you grow bigger, quality becomes a question now. Because with where you are right now, you have grown immensely. Mm -hmm. And with your places on African market, we're going to expect again for you to continue growing exponentially as well. Correct. Is it going to be a challenge for you now to keep on churning out the quality content that your channel has been associated with? Or you're going to put in structures to make sure that this doesn't change for you? And what are those structures, Phil, that you plan to put in place? Well, we have just a quality is a big thing for me. It's a big thing. And if you can't have quality in the host, quality in the stories, what's very important for the people, then it's not going to last very long with me. I'll shut something down. Yes. The, I have the idea of the market controls everything. For instance, I could like you as a host all day long, but if the people don't like you and the people don't receive you, you're not going to stay with me very long because it's what the people say, not what I say. Um, and have, letting the people have more control on what's going on and people having control over the stories. It's like the people are asking you questions. Yes. I prefer to talk to, to, to the people and, and engage the people because the people's the ones going to support your platform. The people's going to spread it out there versus these corporate entities putting somebody up there. Say, I don't even like that guy. What is he even talking about? No, no, no. It's, it's, so nothing's going to change. Quality is a big thing for me because we are already behind the eight ball, mm -hmm. you know, because they, are, they believe, oh, black people, or African people, oh, this stuff is not as high quality as the white people. There's, no, no, that, that's a lie. So quality is a big thing for me. You know, if we're not going to have quality, once again, we're just not going to do it. Yes. Somebody asked this question. Um, here's the thing. There are popular languages in this African market that you're going, because I know now your channel is essentially heavily English. English. Yes. Now, coming to the Kenyan, uh, sorry, to the African market, it means that you're going to expose yourself to a larger audience, a larger audience by not, that might not essentially prefer English as a mode of uh, mm. communication or the mode of relaying these stories to them. Mm. Are we going to see collaborations within this market that you're targeting, essentially the heavy markets? Or are going to see native languages being the conversation points of these stories? That's something that we, we've thought about and been open to. You yeah. know, we got to first get the bread and butter first. And, and then once the bread and butter, I mean, we could have a channel in Swahili. It's no issue, no problem. We could, but it's going to stay the same model. You understand? If it's something in French, we can do an African diaspora, you know, news channel in French, but it's going to stay the same model. Mm -hmm. The model is not going to change. Yeah. You know, languages is one thing, but the model is, just, you know, so for us, we got to build the infrastructure first. It's like that sort of thing is kind of like adding bills and whistles, but we got to get the highway built first. Then once we get the highway built first and all the lights and everything is great, then we can focus on extra things like languages and, and, and things like that. But we're definitely open to that. Pretty much. The question as well for, uh, to you, Phil Scott. Somebody's saying, it's interesting 
how you've made news consumable. Most people would run away from hard news, mm -hmm. but you find a way to tell your stories in a way that I will sit and consume news. Mm -hmm. Have you been able to do that, Phil Scott? This is a great question from one of our viewers as well. Well, we just make sure that we're just connecting with the people and it's not boring. Um, my main way of doing news is not running off of a teleprompter. Um, I, I don't know what I'm going to say before I get on there. I mean, I do my research on, on what the story is, yes, but I don't like to look at a teleprompter because it kind of confines me. Uh, my the team who's doing the news, yes. I don't tell them even what stories to make. Because a lot of mainstream, they tell you, hey, make this story, make this story. Unless it's something we really need to target, which is rare. But I believe in allowing them to have their own creativity and their own voice. So we don't script anything. And it just comes from the heart. And that's what people connect with, is that. Yes. And that, that, that's going to be the model throughout? Yes. I don't tell people how to think. I don't want, I don't want people around me that I got to control. Like, you, cause you may have an idea. Yes. That's something I'm not even thinking. So why would I stifle your creativity is making you a robot? I don't want robots around me. I want human beings who actually think for themselves, and I tell you, what story are you going to cover? I want you to tell me what story you're going to cover. I'm not going to tell you. And if you can't come up with enough stories on your own that's interesting for the people, then once again, if the market, then switches the people, not feeling what you're doing, well, we're going to have to see how that works out. But everyone I have, they come up with their own stories. I do not tell them what to cover. Yes, pretty much. Somebody will ask him. Mm -hmm. You, you're passionate about whatever it is that you're doing, and it comes from an area when you want to see change mm -hmm. in, the, in the stories that you tell. Have you been able to track change in some of the bigger stories that you've covered on that channel? Sure, sure. I, I've had people, you know, tell me they have, you know, went to college because of some things we're saying. Mm -hmm. I've had some people say they came to the African continent. Some people have gotten insult, involved in like healthcare. Um, some people have gotten government contracts. You know, some people have gotten married because they've heard, you know, this, with, with the importance of family. Um, I've had a lot of definitely African people saying, you know, they feel great to hear someone standing up because there's a great need here for people to have a voice and to yes. be bold in what they're saying. Yes. And I love that. You know, I had a journalism student out of 50 came right to me and start questioning me about things and even saying, hey, when I'm done, could I get a job? I said, see, I like people like you. I don't like people standing behind just kind of quiet and smiling. No, we need people that's aggressive, yes. and bold, mm -hmm. because everything that's coming against us is aggressive and bold. So either it's one of those things, either you get down in the fight or you're gonna lay down. And we can, and the and black people globally, Sometimes been laying down too much for me. Yes. And in black America, we had to fight. We're still fighting today. We, we didn't have a chance to lay down. Everything we have achieved has been because we have fought mm -hmm. one of the greatest systems mm -hmm. of white supremacy out there. And we're still fighting now. So we got every, AMP spread everywhere. And that's how we look at it. With a growth model that you're adopting now, let's mm -hmm. go into the African market and trying to mm -hmm. spread our wings around that area. It, it's not going to be essentially running on the financing model that you have right now, let's do a lot of stories, and, and then the channel that we're running the stories on is going gonna, gonna to commercialize the stories, and then we're going to get paid at the end of the day. Yeah. Are we going to see strategic collaborations now from your channel, from, like, let's say, like-minded organizations and people who are like what you're doing to help you further penetrate the African market to the level that you may wish, Phil Scott? Well, anybody that's going to partner with us, they got to understand our vision. I'm not changing what we're doing for, for any kind of funding because I've ha had people reach out to me many times for funding. Well, if you don't do this or maybe you're just a little too black, sorry, stay over there. <laughs> I don't want you. Yes, I'd yes. rather stick to what we have now because mm -hmm. it works. Because what I've seen by not taking certain funding yes. or turning certain people away, we have grown by 10 times by not doing that. So anybody that's going to partner with us, understand what you see is what you get. We're mm -hmm. not changing for anything. Not at all, at all. But then I'm going to get back on that funding mm -hmm. question. Because even if we're going to talk about the sporadic growth and you being able to touch uh, these the, stories that are really pertinent to the African continent, funding will be funding, as they say. Mm -hmm. But then you're still going to get the money and do the stories that you want to do. Do you think you're still going to keep on saying no to these people approaching you for this particular funding to help... It's going to be a collaboration, Phil. Will you know, will well, the collaboration things? is this. Yeah. You being put on a platform where people are seeing it. Yes. And then they could buy your product. 
That's so that's a win win. Any kind of advertising is, is is a gamble. You can put up a billboard don't mean people are going to buy your product. But if you want to be put on a platform where, where the young people are at, where people are really having conversations, then you come on over here to African Diaspora News Channel. That's just really what it is. We're not going to change for anything, period. So I mean, conform first before you approach us. Know what we do before you approach us. Is that what you're saying? Well, just my model is this. The platform is the platform. It works very well. If you want to get in with us and you want to advertise and reach these young people, because we have a lot of Gen Xers, we have a lot of millennials, we have a lot of Gen Zs. Yeah. That's our target audience. If you want those people to look at your goods and services, then come over here with us. And the people will say, okay, it don't matter even what community you come from. They will see, especially if you're outside the black community, okay, this particular company actually okay with partnering with a news organization that's about black empowerment. I respect that. I'm actually going to buy that. Yes. Because we see that they don't, they, they want to be out there for the right thing. Because you have all these corporations say, oh, we're for the right thing. And, oh, we want to see about, you know, diversity and equality. But when it comes to money, you're not really talking about diversity and equality unless they can control you. And if you, and of course, we're not going to say nothing reckless and illegal and lawful. We're going to follow all the laws of the land, no matter where we come from. We're not going to do that. We're not reckless. Even in America, we're not reckless. You know, we know what we can say and what we can't say. We understand that. It, it's, 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 trust me, we understand it. But what we do works. And if you're a company that wants to partner with us, we're definitely open and welcome. Your growth has been exponential. I mean, mm -hmm. when we look at the numbers, well, they're, they're unimaginable, mm -hmm. and they keep on growing by the day. Mm -hmm. Did you see yourself morphing or growing into something bigger than just a news channel, where you're saying, well, our stories are focused. They're focused on the black story. They're focused on the African story. What can we do for impact? Because with growth, then, comes the question of, is that it? Do you see yourself five years from now maybe growing into something different? Because you're very passionate then about this African story, about this impact, telling the story the way it is. Well, if, if I'm thinking I know what you're saying, I would say this much. We have to corner the market on just black people throughout the world. Yes. We have, yeah. Nobody has really done that. Mm -hmm. And how I look at it, we are the culture. You know, sometimes people ask, well, you're going to cross over to doing this and cross over to doing that. That's another question. And I always say to that, no. I'm not crossing over for anything. We have, it's a lot of people throughout the world as black people. We don't even know who they are, exist. We don't know the cultures. We don't know the languages. We don't know the stories. We need to focus on us because Europeans focus on themselves. Yeah, sure, they talk about other people, but they focus on themselves. And I have no problem, let's say down the line, if somebody come in, if they say they're Indian person, if they're Asian person, if they are whoever, you know, group, and they come in and they say, hey, you know, we want to work, you know, with you. Okay, that's fine. I'm not discriminatory. But this is the job. This is what we talk about. And if you're fine with it, hey, no problem. Yes. You know, so um, that model, no, it's not going to change. No time soon. So you're going to stick to the same African news, um, but the African story, and that will be that, isn't it? So let me, let, me, let me get to know, because I know you're leaving Kenya on mm -hmm. the 2nd of December. Mm -hmm. but that's a couple of days within the country. You're walking around and talking to different people and really trying to see what the scope um, is in terms of the stories that you may want to focus on from the country. Mm. Other than that, what do you expect to get out of this country now before 2nd of December? Well, it's not about what I expect to get out. It's about what I can give back. I'm not coming here to be a colonizer. That's not what I do. Yes. I come like, what can I give back? What could I learn from the people that I could bring back? you know, to America and say, hey, this is what our brothers and sisters dealing with. This is what we need to do. This is what we need to contribute. This is how we need to work together. It's not about me taking anything. I think too many have taken enough. Yes. You know, what can we do to give back? And one thing I always say, especially to black Americans, if you come back, create a business and hire the locals. That's one of the best ways you can give back because of jobs, you know, unemployment, et cetera. Yes. Um, and, and make friends with people. It's all about me giving back. It's not about taking. Pretty much. Now, last question is a direct question as well. Um, can you ask Phil Scott how I can get to work with them directly since he's in Kenya? <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So we have many different programs for that. Yes. And we also, uh -huh. you know, I was just thinking about coming back eventually and doing a, a, even a job fair mm -hmm. uh, to bring people in who are serious about our growth here. Yeah. Um, but we do have like a contributor program that anybody can contribute. 
Of course, you just have to be ready, though. I mean, I, we can't just accept any old kind of video, any old kind of situation. The sound got to be right, et cetera. Yes. But we do have a contributor program. You know, if they would like to, you know, find out about that, they can email, you know, our business manager at Kellen at ColemanPRFirm.com. Email him, and he will, you know, guide you through that process. We are open to anybody, and contributors are paid. You know, we have a, a model where we pay them. So mm -hmm. no one does anything on our platform for free. I won't allow it. Um, I think if someone does the work, you should pay them something, right? So, yeah, that's just if they want to get involved, they can do it that way. And the contributors can eventually come to full time hosts yes. just based on how they perform. Pretty much. Phil Scott, you have 15 seconds to respond to this question. Could you talk to me about your channel then in the next 10 years? What do you envision? Channel wise, that's a good question. Um, I'm thinking bigger than a uh, channel. I'm thinking more so, you know, our website being, you know, way bigger than, you know, what it is now. We want to focus on our website and also our different divisions. And we're going to open, like, fence our Kenyan division, you know, growing that and then open up other divisions in other African countries, yes. um, setting some up out in the Caribbean, Latin America. We just think about just getting di different divisions everywhere because we want everybody to tell their story, right? And everybody to participate, like the question was asked earlier, fence. So did someone say, well, hey, you know, I mean, I haven't seen an Islamic person on yet. I'm like, hey, I'm looking for a host like that, you yes. know, to come eventually. So we're looking to get everybody involved. And, and, and I probably eventually will start falling back myself because if I can get 10 people or 20 people to talk like me, I'll just sit back and let you do it. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm happy with that.